An artificial heart is a device that replaces the heart. Artificial hearts are typically used to bridge the time to heart transplantation, or to permanently replace the heart in case heart transplantation is impossible. Although other similar inventions preceded it going back to the late 1940s, the first artificial heart to be successfully implanted in a human was the JARVIK-7 in 1982, designed by a team including Willem Johan Kolf and Robert Jarvik. An artificial heart is distinct from a ventricular assist device designed to support a failing heart. It is also distinct from a cardiopulmonary bypass machine, which is an external device used to provide the functions of both the heart and lungs and are only used for a few hours at a time, most commonly during cardiac surgery. History Origins A synthetic replacement for the heart remains one of the long-sought holy grails of modern medicine. The obvious benefit of a functional artificial heart would be to lower the need for heart transplants, because the demand for organs always greatly exceeds supply. Although the heart is conceptually a pump, it embodies subtleties that defy straightforward emulation with synthetic materials and power supplies. Consequences of these issues include severe foreign body rejection and external batteries that limit mobility. These complications limited the lifespan of early human recipients to hours or days. Early development The first artificial heart was made by Vladimir Demikov in 1937. It was transplanted to a dog. Although Jarvik created the idea and rough draft for the artificial heart, his models were not created of immaterial that the human body would accept. Dayton, Oeo Zivolo, Salia, along with various colleagues, developed a polymer material that the human body would not necessarily reject. On July 3, 1952, 41-year-old Henry Opitek, suffering from shortness of breath, made medical history at Harper University Hospital at Wayne State University in Michigan. The Dodrill GMR heart machine, considered to be the first operational mechanical heart, was successfully used while performing heart surgery. Forrest Dewey Dodrill, working closely with Matthew Dudley, used the machine in 1952 to bypass Henry Opitek's left ventricle for 50 minutes while he opened the patient's left atrium and worked to repair the mitral valve. In Dodrell's post-operative report, he notes, To our knowledge, this is the first instance of survival of a patient when a mechanical heart mechanism was used to take over the complete body function of maintaining the blood supply of the body while the heart was open and operated on. A heart-lung machine was first used in 1953 during a successful open heart surgery. John Haitian Gibbon, the inventor of the machine, performed the operation and developed the heart-lung substitute himself. Following these advances, scientific interest for the development of a solution for heart disease developed in numerous research groups worldwide. Early designs of total artificial hearts in 1949, a precursor to the modern artificial heart pump was built by doctors William Sewell and William Glenn of the Yale School of Medicine using an erector, set, assorted odds and ends, and dime store toys. The external pump successfully bypassed the heart of a dog for more than an hour. Paul Winchell invented an artificial heart with the assistance of Henry Heimlich and held the first patent for such a device. The university requested that Winchell donate the heart to the University of Utah, which he did. There is some debate as to how much of Winchell's design Robert Jarvik used in creating Jarvik's artificial heart. Heimlich states, I saw the heart, I saw the patent and I saw the letters. The basic principle used in Winchell's heart and Jarvik's heart is exactly the same. Jarvik denies that any of Winchell's design elements were incorporated into the device he fabricated for humans which was successfully implanted into Barney Clark in 1982. On December 12, 1957, Willem Johan Kolf, the world's most prolific inventor of artificial organs, implanted an artificial heart into a dog at Cleveland Clinic. The dog lived for 90 minutes. 
In 1958, Domingo Leota initiated the studies of tar replacement at Lyon, France, and in 1959-60 at the National University of Córdoba, Argentina. He presented his work at the meeting of the American Society for Artificial Internal Organs held in Atlantic City in March 1961. At that meeting, Leota described the implantation of three types of orthotopic TAHs in dogs, each of which used a different source of external energy an implantable electric motor, an implantable rotating pump with an external electric motor, and a pneumatic pump. In 1964, the National Institutes of Health started the Artificial Heart Program, with the goal of putting a man-made heart into a human by the end of the decade. In February 1966, Adrian Kantrowitz rose to international prominence when he performed the world's first permanent implantation of a partial mechanical heart at Maimonides Medical Center. In 1967, Kolf left Cleveland Clinic to start the Division of Artificial Organs at the University of Utah and pursue his work on the artificial heart. In 1973, a calf named Tony survived for 30 days on an early calf heart. In 1975, a bull named Burke survived 90 days on the artificial heart. In 1976, a calf named Abur lived for 184 days on the Jarvik 5 artificial heart. In 1981, a calf named Alfred Lord Tennyson lived for 268 days on the Jarvik 5. Over the years, more than 200 physicians, engineers, students and faculty developed, tested and improved Kolf's artificial heart. To help manage his many endeavors, Kolf assigned project managers. Each project was named after its manager. Graduate student Robert Jarvik was the project manager for the Artificial Heart, which was subsequently renamed the Jarvik 7. In 1981, William de Vries submitted a request to the FDA for permission to implant the Jarvik 7 into a human being. On December 2, 1982, Colt implanted the Jarvik 7 Artificial Heart into Barney Clark a dentist from Seattle who was suffering from severe congestive heart failure. Clark lived for 112 days tethered to an external pneumatic compressor, a device weighing some 400 pounds. But during that time he suffered prolonged periods of confusion and a number of instances of bleeding, and asked several times to be allowed to die. First clinical implantation of a total artificial heart On April 4, 1969, Domingo Leota and Denton A. Cooley replaced a dying man's heart with a mechanical heart inside the chest at the Texas Heart Institute in Houston as a bridge for a transplant. The man woke up and began to recover. After 64 hours, the pneumatic-powered artificial heart was removed and replaced by a donor heart. However, 32 hours after transplantation, the man died of what was later proved to be an acute pulmonary infection, extended to both lungs caused by fungi, most likely caused by an immunosuppressive drug complication. The original prototype of Leota Cooley artificial heart used in this historic operation is prominently displayed in the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of American History, Treasures of American History, exhibit in Washington. DC. First clinical applications of a permanent pneumatic total artificial heart The first clinical use of an artificial heart designed for permanent implantation rather than a bridge to transplant occurred in 1982 at the University of Utah. Artificial kidney pioneer Willem Johan Kolf started the Utah Artificial Organs Program in 1967. There, physician engineer Clifford Quanget invented two components of an integrated pneumatic artificial heart system, a ventricle with hemispherical diaphragms that did not crush red blood cells and an external heart driver that inherently regulated blood flow, without needing complex control systems. Independently, Paul Winchell designed and patented a similarly shaped ventricle and donated the patent to the Utah program. Throughout the 1970s and early 1980s, 
veterinarian Donald Olson led a series of calf experiments that refined the artificial heart and its surgical care. During that time, as a student at the University of Utah, Robert Jarvik combined several modifications, an ovoid shape to fit inside the human chest, and more blood-compatible polyurethane developed by biomedical engineer Donald Lyman, and a fabrication method by Quanget that made the inside of the ventricle smooth and seamless to reduce dangerous stroke, causing blood clots. On December 2, 1982, William DeVries implanted the artificial heart into retired dentist Barney Bailey Clark, who survived 112 days with the device. Dying on March 23, 1983, Bill Schroeder became the second recipient and lived for a record 620 days. Contrary to popular belief and erroneous articles in several periodicals, the Jarvik heart was not banned for permanent use. Today, the modern version of the Jarvik 7 is known as the Syncardia Temporary Total Artificial Heart. It has been implanted in more than 1,350 people as a bridge to transplantation. In the mid-1980s, artificial hearts were powered by dishwasher-sized pneumatic power sources whose lineage went back to Alpha Laval milking machines. Moreover, two sizable catheters had to cross the body wall to carry the pneumatic pulses to the implanted heart, greatly increasing the risk of infection. To speed development of a new generation of technologies, the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute opened a competition for implantable electrically powered artificial hearts. Three groups received funding. Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio, the College of Medicine of Pennsylvania State University in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and ABM, Inc., of Danvers, Massachusetts. Despite considerable progress, the Cleveland program was discontinued after the first five years. Polymeric trileaflet valves ensure unidirectional blood flow with a low-pressure gradient and good longevity. State-of-the-art transcutaneous energy transfer eliminates the need for electric wires crossing the chest wall. First clinical application of an intrathoracic pump on July 19, 1963. Stanley Crawford and Domingo Leota implanted the first clinical left ventricular assist device at the Methodist Hospital in Houston, Texas. In a patient who had a cardiac arrest after surgery, the patient survived for four days under mechanical support but did not recover from the complications of the cardiac arrest. Finally, the pump was discontinued and the patient died. First clinical application of a paracorporeal pump on April 21, 1966. Michael DeBakey and Leota implanted the first clinical LVAD in a paracorporeal position at the Methodist Hospital in Houston, in a patient experiencing cardiogenic shock after heart surgery. The patient developed neurological and pulmonary complications and died after a few days of LVAD mechanical support. In October 1966, DeBakey and Leota implanted the paracorporeal Leota DeBakey LVAD in a new patient who recovered well and was discharged from the hospital after 10 days of mechanical support, thus constituting the first successful use of an LVAD for postcardiotomy shock.